Hey guys, so today I'm filling my hit it or quit it thoughts on hauls at number 13. If you have never seen this video from me before, I will have my playlist linked down below. And basically I'll be reviewing the items that I hauled about 10 months ago. Sometimes after you see products shown in a haul, they are never mentioned again unless they're in a favorites or in empties. So by doing this type of video, I'll be reviewing every single item that I hauled so you can know my current thoughts on those products. My inspiration for this series is it's Kirsten and her what I thought on stuff I bought series I will have her channel and her playlist linked down below I will also link down below the original haul video in case you're interested in that and I will list all the items that I'm mentioning today so now just jumping right into the review so all of these items were purchased last September I have some things from Mac the drugstore and some other random so first I'm going to start with Mac the first two things I purchased from MAC were two Pro Pan eyeshadows. I have the shade Expensive Pink, which is a Velux Pearl, and Free to Be, which is a matte. I do have a Get Ready With Me using these shadows. I will link that for you guys, but I haven't used them much since then because they are so unique. I need to set aside time to figure out a look with these shadows. I'm gonna have an especially hard time with Free To Be, I believe. I mean, this is a matte peachy pink shade. Very beautiful as a blush, but I'm trying to figure out how to use it as an eyeshadow. An expensive pink is stunning shade. These are both very, very pigmented. Definitely love those two finishes as well. MAC shadows are some of my absolute favorites, so um, I definitely do recommend them. I think they're really fun shades to own. Next, I get a sample of the MAC Zoom Fast Black Lash Mascara. This is what it looks like. It is a natural bristle brush. Honestly, this did absolutely nothing for me. No length, no volume. All it did was make my lashes darker, so I definitely don't recommend this mascara. I would not waste your money on that. So many drugstore mascaras really outperform that one. Next, I purchased some blushes. The first is from the Simpsons collection, and this is in the shade Sideshow You. There were two blushes released in this collection, and this shade was a MAC Online exclusive, and it is the most beautiful neon matte peachy pink shade. I'm so obsessed with this. It is one of my holy grail blushes, and if you can tell, Marge's face is embossed in here, which I think is so cute. It is the same image that is on the compact. So I love this color so, so much. And this is a huge size. This is the size of a beauty powder, but the more blush, the better. So absolutely love this. It is such a holy grail product of mine. If you can find it at a CCO, I would definitely recommend you guys pick it up. Then I purchased a, another blush. This is MAC Peaches and Cream from the Sharon Osbourne collection. And both of these blushes are satin finishes. And this is a beautiful bright pinky rose shade. So I actually had to buy this off of the MAC Facebook group that I've talked about a couple times. I'll have a link for it down below because I messed around too long trying to buy it from a particular website that like really went out of stock and the prices were higher. So I wasn't able to actually buy this when I wanted to but I was able to get it for very close to retail price from that Mac Facebook group and it was brand new in box. So like I said, I'll have that link down below. I am obsessed with this blush. So happy that I got my hands on it. And ever since this mishap right here, I have been buying my limited edition Mac items from Nordstrom because they do not sell out near as fast as the Mac website does. And you also always get free shipping. So definitely recommend you buy your limited edition Mac items from Nordstrom. These two blushes are absolute holy grails of mine. They're so amazing. MAC blushes are my absolute favorite. If I had to get rid of all the rest of my blushes, but I could keep my MAC blushes, I'd be really depressed, but also I'd be okay with that. And the very last MAC item I purchased was the Patent Polish Lip Pencil in the shade Fearless. This is a really pretty blue tone pink. And these were limited edition. But I'm very happy to say that MAC decided that they were going to bring them back this month, which is so, so exciting. I have Fearless and Go For Girly. Both of them are Holy Grail lip products to me. This does not stain your lips. Maybe the darker shades would a little bit, 
but I absolutely love this. It feels very comfortable on my lips. I love the color and it does last for a little bit, but it isn't a long wearing lip product. Definitely recommend you guys pick them up when they come back around. I'm thinking that I might want to get the shades Kittenish and Patent Pink. Let me know if you purchase any of these, what shades that you have. I do have a whole review video that I will link for you guys so you guys can have more detail. Then I purchased two things from Revlon because they were 40% off at the drugstore. I purchased two of their foundations. First was the regular Revlon Color Stay in the Oily Combo version in the shade 150 Buff. This is an okay drugstore foundation. Um, I have repurchased it several times, but it definitely is not my favorite. I have heard from my friend Jean that the dry normal skin version is better. So the next time I buy a drugstore foundation, I'm going to try this one in the dry normal skin version but that will probably be a while because I do have quite a few foundations that I'm trying to use up before I buy any new ones. So is this a favorite? No. Would I buy it again? Yes. Do I recommend it? Maybe. Um, I know that was like all over the place but I do think it is a good drugstore foundation but it is not my absolute favorite, but it is because I like max, max coverage and that gives about medium. So I do think it's a good foundation. It just isn't really live up to my particular preferences. My other Revlon item is the Revlon Color Stay Whip Foundation, also in the shade 150 buff. I do not like this. This does give full coverage, but this feels very heavy on the skin. It never sets. So it made me feel oily and greasy and just gross. So I would not recommend this. I'm not going to repurchase it. Maybe if you're dry skin, you would like this, but I would definitely not recommend it for somebody with oily skin. My next item is from L'Oreal. This was also 40% off. I cannot resist a 40% off sale. This is the L'Oreal Glossy Balm in the shade Lovely Mocha, which is a really pretty rosy tone nude. And this is not a stain. It really is just a glossy balm. Gives your lips some color and it does feel really comfortable. I'm not going to purchase any more of these shades. Is this a must have for me? No. But do I like it? Yes. So I would say give it a whirl if it's 40% off. Um, I think the formula is nice. It just isn't as holy grail to me as the MAC patent polishes. Next, I purchased a couple things from the Wet n Wild Summer Collection. First was one of the Wet n Wild Mega Slicks Balm Stains, which is a jumbo lip product that stains. And this is in the shade Tangerine and Tribal, which looks like a peachy coral in the packaging. But when it goes onto your lips, it actually is a different color. It is more of a peachy pink shade which I still think is absolutely beautiful but I've heard that with a lot of these wet n wild mega slicks balm stains is that the color that shows up on your lips is not the color that you see in the tube but still really beautiful I do like the formula of this again I'm not going to buy any more just because I prefer the Revlon Just Bitten Kissable Balm Stains and because most of the shades from Wet n Wild I'm not interested in or I already have similar shades from Revlon. But I definitely love this color. It is a great lip product. I do need to use it more. So I would recommend that you guys try these out if you're looking for an inexpensive jumbo balm stain. Then I purchased three nail polishes. I only have two here to share with you. Ferris Wheel Romance and Chambray Showers. These are from the Wet n Wild Wild Shine line. These were 99 cents each. Both of these are opaque and two coats and long lasting. These are two of my holy grail nail polishes. They're so amazing. And the fact that they are 99 cents blows my socks off. I am obsessed with this formula and these colors. I think it's funny how many Holy Grail items I have in this video. The other shade was Gypsy Green and that was a really pretty teal color but it was a jelly formula so it wasn't even opaque in three coats so I threw that away. I was really disappointed because I loved the color but I hate jelly nail polishes. Next I purchased two things from Rimmel. I think they maybe were buy one get one half off and I had some CVS reward bucks. The first thing I purchased was the Rimmel Stay Matte Primer which I have used up. That was an okay primer but it didn't do anything amazing to help keep me matte. But I haven't tried any primer that I feel actually keeps me matte. So I've heard a lot of great things about it. So I would recommend it for anybody that is combo or oily skin that's looking for a mattifying primer from the drugstore. But 
it was not a miracle worker for me. The other Rimmel product that I purchased was the Exaggerate Waterproof Eye Definer in the shade In the Nude. This baby has lasted me so freaking long. Hopefully I'll be finished with this in a couple weeks. And I have been using it basically every single day for a year. This is amazing. I love this liner. It does a good job of staying in the waterline. But again, it is a nude shade. So when it does, you know, run out of your waterline, you're not going to see it on your face like you would a black or brown liner. So I do definitely recommend this. And I would repurchase it. The only drugstore liners that I have seen in a nude shade are the Rimmel Scandal Eyes and the Rimmel Exaggerate. The next thing I purchased was a brush. This is the e.l.f. Small Tapered Brush, and I use this to set my under eyes. I absolutely love this brush. I think it is amazing. I love the shape of it. It is perfect for setting the under eyes. You could use it for a highlight. You could use it for contour. Absolutely love this brush. The e.l.f. Studio brushes are only $3, most of them, and they perform so well. So definitely recommend this brush and it is a favorite of mine. So next I purchased two makeup items from eBay which I don't do very often but the first one I got was the Maybelline Eye Studio Plush Silk Quad in the shade Cozy Cashmere which was from a limited edition collection a couple years ago and I found this very close to retail again and we have two metallic shades and two matte shades. This is the only quad that Maybelline has with matte shades in it and they are these beautiful warm tones. I do have a chit chat get ready with me using this quad which I will link for you guys but I absolutely love this. It performs really well. These Maybelline plush silk quads are really really incredible. So if I can find a link for this I will have it down below so you guys can purchase it as well but Definitely recommend the Maybelline Eye Studio Plush Silk Quads in general. They are some of the best shadows from the drugstore. My next item that I also purchased from eBay was the Bare Minerals Marvelous Moxie Lip Gloss in the shade Future Star, which is this really pretty creamy peachy pink shade. And Emily Noel 83 had done a review of this mini Bare Minerals Marvelous Moxie Lip Gloss kit. And I mentioned that I wish that I could buy Future Star on its own. And someone commented back to me and said that it was sold individually as part of a QVC deal and they recommended that I look on eBay for it and they were so right and I was able to find it and it was under retail so that's very exciting this color is so beautiful I haven't used it a ton actually but I do really enjoy the formula of these lip glosses the scent is very different if you guys have ever smelled Orbit's bubble mint gum it smells just like that it's a bit of cinnamon a bit of peppermint and a bit of bubble gum like all mixed together smells just like orbit bubble mint gum so if you don't like that you won't like this once it's on my lips I can't really smell it it's mostly just when I'm applying it I don't wear lip gloss very often so most of my collection is NYX butter glosses because they're very inexpensive they have a lot of colors so I probably won't purchase any more of these shades because of the price but I do think that it's a really nice lip gloss if you're interested in trying them out and my last item was from the Home Shopping Network. I remember Novu Cheap posted that if you were a first time shopper on HSN, they would give you a $20 off of 40, I believe. And then I think they also had some other coupon going at the same time. So I was able to get this palette for around $25, I believe, which is amazing. That's the only reason I decided to get this. This is the Lorac Pro 2. A couple of these shades really spoke to me, but I wasn't wasn't sure what I would think about the formula overall. I wouldn't have purchased this palette if it wasn't on sale and I actually have three tutorials using this. I have a tutorial using rose, mocha, and nectar. I have a tutorial using chrome and silver and a tutorial using jade and cocoa. I will have all of those linked down below for you guys if you want to check out those looks. Um, the shadows in here are really pretty. I don't reach for this very often and that is because of the formula these are really, really pigmented, but also they have a lot of kick up of product, which I don't like. And I feel like you can definitely over blend these shadows and make them look messy. And I wouldn't say that I'm an eyeshadow bully, but because some of my first shadows that I fell in love with were MAC shadows and they are packed more tightly, I'm used to having to really, you know, work to get my shadow on. So I've just gotten so used to that formula to work with a formula like this is just really different for me. I think I can get the hang of it if I 
try a little bit more. Um, so I haven't used this palette a ton for that reason, but the colors are very, very beautiful. I'm happy to have it. Would I purchase this full size? Absolutely not. Would I recommend it? Yes, I would. It is a nice cool tone palette. And this also came with the Lorac Pro Mascara and the Lorac Primer. The eyeshadow primer, I think, works well. Do I think it's worth the money? Not really. I, I prefer the Milani eyeshadow primer. And the Lorac Pro Mascara sucked. The brush is super, super big, kind of hard to work with. You have to be really careful when applying it that you don't get it everywhere. And I didn't feel like it did anything for my lashes, so... I didn't even use it up like I just threw it out because I thought it sucked that bad so I do like the palette the primer is okay didn't like the mascara whatsoever so guys that was my hit or quit it thoughts on hauls number 13 if you have tried any of these products please let me know your thoughts in a comment down below thank you so much for watching please rate comment and subscribe and I'll talk to you soon bye guys